In wartime, human lives are so cheap with sword and fire sowing death, their wandering ghosts, apparitions of lost souls make the scene still more mournful. There were children born in an evil hour who were parted from their parents. No mother or father holds them close. Heartrending are their infant cries. I visited South Vietnam shortly after the Tet Offensive of 1968. My purpose was to find war-injured children who could not be treated in Vietnam and who had to be evacuated to the United States if they were going to survive. As a child psychiatrist, I visited civilian hospitals, refugee camps, orphanages, and bombed-out residential areas in the cities. I was prepared to find physical destruction, filth, and poverty as conditions common to many parts of the world today, even though they were relatively rare in Vietnam until the escalation of the war in 1965. I wanted to know how the children are growing up within a country a total war, the children who have not been killed or burned or wounded, the children who are the last hope of Vietnam. In the cities, I found packs of boys roaming the streets sleeping in the streets or in movie houses or wherever they can find shelter. In the daytime, they shine shoes, steal what they can find, pimp for their mothers and perform other services for the GIs. He comes from the countryside and says he's an orphan. To eat, he shines shoes and picks pockets. He speaks good pidgin English and is a leader among the street children. Young is an old timer. He has been around for a long time, some say for at least five years. He is 14. Two years ago, a magazine printed a picture of him standing in the same place. He goes home maybe once a year at Tet. He's a skillful thief. Country boys coming into the city and cut off from their own way of life are confronted by a sordid side of American culture. Like children everywhere, they absorb what they see and make it a part of their own world. It seemed to me that these children had made a remarkably realistic adjustment to their ugly circumstances. Although their future is at best uncertain, 
they have at least found their own way to adapt to the chaos. In their gangs, they have found a new identity and a psychological home base, which makes it possible for them to solve the everyday problems of staying alive in an active way. If anything, I wondered if they would be unable to contribute to the rebuilding of their destroyed land because they had learned the things they know so very much out of context. Đêm tóc ta ngủ buồn nhớ ai Nửa chừng duyên kiếp chia phôi Other children have lost the support of any community sense. Taken out of the familiar social environment, they are now reduced to passively accepting whatever the generals and the bureaucrats decide about their fate. Among the four million South Vietnamese now officially recognized as refugees, most of them women and children and old men. Many have to live in camps where not even the barest necessities for marginal existence are available. Of the permanent refugees, many were forcibly evicted from their villages to make room for search and destroy missions or free fire zones. Their graveyards, once the sacred place where Vietnamese were bound by tradition to honor their ancestors, have been requisitioned as garbage dumps. Respect for the old people, which was once the foundation of family life and social order, has become a mockery. The children have nothing to do all day, nothing that is except to beg and steal. There are no schools, and even if there were, the teachers have been drafted. Mothers have taken up prostitution so that the children could eat. Only the soldiers have steady work, but the women and children must passively wait for the end of the war. <laughs> Yet even these children have some semblance of a tie to the past, some family member who will look after them and who will make them feel wanted. Still others have never known a family of their own. These are the orphans born in an evil hour and left on someone's doorstep to die. For them, the only hope of survival is the orphanage. Before the war, there were almost no orphanages in Vietnam and children who had lost both parents could take it for granted that an aunt or an uncle would take them in. 
Today, there are at least 80 orphanages trying to care for 100,000 children. Some are the children of prostitutes, others have American fathers, and for them there is no place in Vietnamese society. Still others were abandoned by their parents so that at least they would not starve to death. Many of the orphans have developed the vacant stares and endless rocking behavior, which we as psychiatrists identify with hospitalism and which we attribute to social isolation, lack of stimulation, and lack of love. Among these children, deprived of their homes and families, alienated from their values and their society, there are still others who got in the way of the bullets, the napalm, and the cluster bombs. They face the future without even their bodies intact.